All right, so first, what is focus bracketing and focus stacking? Focus bracketing is the action of taking several pictures with different point of focus to make sure that every single point that you want to be sharp in your picture will be in actual focus in one of those pictures. Now, focus stacking is the action of stacking those pictures and make sure that you select the points that are in focus in every single one of those pictures to create a final image with every single point in focus. Now, I know it might sound confusing at first, but I'm gonna show you an example later and you will see directly what I mean. All right, so in which situation do you need focus bracketing and focus stacking? In product, in food photography, or even in landscape photography, even if you close your aperture down to its minimum value, you might come across cases where your whole subject cannot be in focus. And this is where you need focus stacking to artificially make sure that it becomes in focus after. And this is why focus bracketing and focus stacking is such an important technique to understand because it can allow you to create sharper and better pictures that can satisfy a need for a client. All right, so now that I've talked a lot about the concept, let's talk about how we can achieve that on our Fujifilm camera. To demonstrate that, I set up a small scene where I will be shooting strawberries in a plate at a certain angle using my X-T5 and the 80 mm macro. Now in the scene that I set, I made sure to set my X-T5 on a tripod to make sure that there is little to no movement between all the shots that we are going to take. Now notice that I am close all the way down to F22. But when I focus on the top strawberries and zoom on my image, I can see that the top strawberry is in focus. But when I look at the down part of the image, this one is not. Now, how do we solve this? We solve this with focus bracketing. So let's see how we set this up on our Fujifilm camera. In order to set this up, first, I want you to look at your top left dial and set it to the BKT for bracket position. Next, go to your menu in shooting setting, then go to drive setting, bracket setting, and there are two things you want to set here. First, you want to make sure that the bracket select is selected for focus. Then go all the way down to focus bracket. And for this method today, we are going to use the auto method. Now you can only use the auto method if you have a lens with autofocus that is compatible with the Fuji X mount. Now when using the auto method, what you're going to do is that you are going to set an interval between each shot. What I recommend you to do is to use one second. This will give the camera enough time between each shot to make sure that there is no micro movement or anything that happened. Now, what you're going to do after that is that you are going to select the start and the end point of your focus. Now, first, you can see a little A here. So what you're going to do is that you're going to set your focus point, turning your focus ring on your lens, where you want the focus to start. So here, I want the fork here to be in focus, so I will start it right before it. Then I'm going to press the OK button on my Fujifilm X-T5, and this will bring me to the end point, the B point of my focus bracketing. So this time I will place the end point after the last point that I want in focus, which is after the plate that you can see on the picture. And now you don't want to press the OK button anymore, press the display back button. And just like this, you set your focus bracket, which is your focus interval, your A point and your B point, in between which your camera will take a set of pictures to make sure that everything will be in focus. Now, one other thing that I would recommend you to do is to set up a self timer to make sure that when you press your shutter button, you do not directly induce any movement on your camera. So set your self timer to two seconds or 10 seconds up to what you need, press your shutter button and let the camera do the work. In my case, my camera took a set of 15 pictures. So I'm just waiting for the camera to take all the pictures. Once they are taken, I take them into Capture One, set up a new session, import all my pictures into Capture One, and before doing any export or any focus stacking, what I usually do is that I apply the basic adjustment to make sure that I'm working with my RAW file in the beginning to have the better result possible. Once I'm satisfied with my adjustment, I copy paste all the adjustment on every single file that the camera produced in the focus bracketing procedure. And then I will export my files into TIFF files. 
Now, the TIFF file can be the size that you want, depending on the size of file that you want. For my part here, I basically export it with an A3 equivalent size. Once everything is exported, I will then move to my focus stacking step. Focus stacking can be done in Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any other software that is capable of doing that. Personally, I like Affinity Photo because it's a one-time purchase and it's pretty cheap and it has all the functionalities that I need. So today I will show you how to do it in Affinity Photo. So in Affinity Photo, click new focus merge, then import all the TIFF files that were created with all the adjustment already present and just let Affinity Photo do the work. Once the focus stacking process is done, you can see that by zooming on the pictures, we can see that every single part of the picture is now in focus in contrast with the first pictures that we took where only one single part of the picture was. And this is also valid not only on the X-T5, but on the X-T4, X-T3, X-H2, X-H2S and X-100V also. So you can use that in a variety of uh, cameras. Let me know down in the comment if you have any other question. Thank you for watching today's video. And if you've missed it, check out this video right here where I tell you how to set up your Fujifilm camera correctly to use manual lenses. See you there.